The other day I had an exchange with uh, Michael Brown, uh, the well-known uh, conservative Christian radio talk show host and author. We've known each other for a few years now. I had an exchange with him on Twitter about uh, having a debate on progressive Christianity. It didn't go well. I posted um, a video after debriefing it on YouTube and my mom complained to me and she said that I was uh, being a little, um, I don't know what's the word, rude, something like that. So I ate crow because when your mom tells you you're doing, you're out of line, you got to say you're out of line. And so then I posted a tweet uh, and I said, this morning I had an, this is on Saturday now, this morning I had an exchange with Michael Brown. I want to apologize publicly to him. I was too brusque and it was counterproductive. I've given myself a much needed time out from talking about Prague Christianity. I'll talk about other things for a while at least. Thanks. All right, um, so that said, uh, this is what I'm gonna do going forward. Oh, and I deleted the video, the YouTube, the offending YouTube video that my mom didn't like. Uh, fair enough, I'm gonna recalibrate. Uh, and I'm going to, from now on, I'm still gonna talk about progressive Christianity and uh, critiquing the evangelical critique of progressive Christianity, but I'm gonna do so in a pleasant way, uh, not in a way that sounds angry or frustrated or overly brusque. Uh, and so what I want to do in this video is, first of all, uh, having said, okay, I've apologized now, I'm going to move on, I'm going to turn over a new leaf, I'm going to be a better person. I want to just return briefly to uh, Professor, Dr., not Professor, Dr. Brown's tweet, uh, the one that I wanted to use as a basis for a debate. And I want to talk a little bit about it just briefly uh, and why I think it's important. And then I wanna talk more generally about the issues at play with progressive Christianity and evangelical Christianity. So here was the tweet that I thought would be a good basis for us to have a debate. So Dr. Brown said a great quote from Augustine, one which describes progressive Christianity. Uh, if you believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you don't like, it is not the gospel you believe, but yourself. Uh, somebody pointed out on, on YouTube before I uh, took my, my uh, video offline that Augustine never said this. I agree. Uh, I, I, when I saw this, I said, that doesn't sound like Augustine. So I did a literature search and I could not find this in any of Augustine's readings, uh, writings, but I did find it referenced in multiple books attributed to Augustine. Uh, so, but that's a sidebar. The main thing I wanted to, to focus on here is that uh, Brown says that what is progressive Christianity? Well, it is if you believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you don't like, it is not the gospel you believe, but yourself. Now, the interesting thing was uh, Brown had said that he's never endorsed or the thesis that progressive Christianity is another religion. But well, this looks a whole lot like that, right? That um, According to in progressive Christianity, you your gospel is yourself. It's not the Christian gospel. And I think that that is a very sweeping statement. And so I think if you make that statement on Twitter, you should be willing to stand behind it. Uh, and as I said, that did not end well. So uh, there we are. Um, um, here's, here's then just to summarize where we're at then. Um, uh, my exchange with Michael Brown was the latest of a series of attempts that I've been making since late April when progressive Christians love Jesus too. Uh, a series of attempts I've been making to have either a dialogue or a formal debate with a person, um, and by person I mean either a professional apologist or a well-recognized Christian apologist or Christian leader or theologian, somebody of note, uh, who is promoting actively the children's thesis that progressive Christianity is another religion or that it's uh, heresy or that it's new age. That's another claim that some people have made. And so I've asked multiple people. I, of course, tried with Childers herself, didn't get a response, tried with Lee Strobel and Sean McDowell. Strobel didn't reply to my tweets, neither did Frank Turek. Um, Sean McDowell, to his credit, replied, but declined uh, a debate. Uh, Mike Winger, uh, to his credit, uh, replied, but he declined to have a dialogue with me. Um, and then other places like Mama Bear Apologetics and either Red Pen or something like that, another fellow online. No, nobody's replied to me. A few people have, have declined to have any an interaction, but the rest have just outright uh, just, just not replied at all. 
Now, admittedly, I don't know in every case that they've actually seen my tweet or inquiry or whatever. It's always possible that they missed it. Suffice it to say, however, I've been at this for three, four months now and trying to get a single person willing to stand behind the thesis that progressive Christianity is another religion or that it's dangerous, heretical, new age, something like that. And I've been able to find nobody, zero, goose egg. Nobody is willing to defend the thesis. The thing is that these many of these same individuals are actively promoting the thesis on their various social media platforms and being interviewed by other friendly evangelicals. So I'm repeatedly hearing the thesis that progressive Christianity is another religion, that it is heretical, that it's dangerous, that it's a disease. I mean, Mike Winger on, on his one presentation, he begins by comparing progressive Christianity to a disease. It's a very common descriptor that I've been encountering. Uh, and so on, that, that it's again, dangerous and new age and so on, but nobody's willing to defend that formally. It's interesting. It's an interesting situation. And note that I'm not getting frustrated and angry here. I'm just very cool and calm and collected and uh, approachable and affable and likable and ironic and uh, all the good things. Uh, but nonetheless, I am pro pointing out the problem here uh, that there are so many people who are conservative evangelicals who say that they really care about truth and that they need to stand for truth and defend truth. And one of the things that they repeatedly are saying is that progressive Christianity is all these things. And yet, when asked to defend the claim that progressive Christianity is all these things, I'm either getting no, I'm not going to defend that claim, or I'm getting pushback or just no response at all. And I think that this is a serious problem. I'm still very calm, as I point that out. And I'm, I'm not angry or frustrated. I am disappointed. And I'm disappointed because of how absolutely harmful that this is. You know, one of the things, I mean, it's just wrong generally to spread falsehoods about groups of people, right? It's wrong. If you go around saying that um, refugees are dirty and they have scabies and they're dangerous or they have leprosy or they, you know, they steal, they steal at higher rates and commit crimes at higher rates, than, than people who are not refugees, than citizens. If you keep making those claims and people ask you, understandably, you have to defend that claim that you're making. Uh, you shouldn't get angry and you shouldn't be defensive. What you should do is if you care about truth, either defend that claim with some evidence or you should withdraw the claim and apologize, issue a retraction and stop uh, spreading falsehoods about refugees. And if you keep spreading falsehoods about progressive Christians, then when people challenge you to defend your view that progressive Christianity is another religion, or that it's heresy, or uh, that it is new age or a disease, when people challenge you on that, again, you either have, you're obliged to defend your claim or withdraw it and issue a retraction and at that point, not only I think do you issue a retraction, but you try to fix the damage that you've done. Now, what is some of the damage that you do? Well, I, I noted on a tweet the other day that I've seen a real spike and a growth in the last year or so, I think broadly correlated with the release of Alyssa Childers' book, Another Gospel, and its popularization. I've seen a spike in randos and random people on the internet uh, commenting to me that I'm not a Christian uh, and that, or that I'm a false Christian or a fake Christian, or I'm, I'm nefarious and all these duplicitous and I'm aligned with Satan and all these things. I mean, I've always heard that stuff, but I've seen a noted uh, increase in it. And, and I think it's not unreasonable to think that there is a relationship between people who are actively continually spreading misinformation about progressive Christians as a group saying these things about them as a group, aligning them with a disease, with malicious intent, or with Satan, uh, with another religion, with, with deception and malevolence and all these terrible things. If you keep maligning those people, well, then your followers who are eating that up, which essentially is like throwing red meat out uh, and galvanizing your base, they're going to now begin to use those very talking points against 
these people that identify as progressive Christians, and that's exactly what I'm seeing. Do I have to say that that's harmful? Does it, do I have to point out how frankly cancerous it is to spread falsehoods about other groups of people? That is cancer. It's cancer on the body of Christ uh, when you are spreading falsehoods. Now, you can always point out, oh, oh, but here's a person who identifies as a progressive Christian, and hey, they have a heretical belief. And I will say, great, I'm glad you pointed that out. Let's talk about that. And let's talk about that specific individual and that specific heretical belief that they have. But what we shouldn't do is talk about progressive Christians as a group as being heretics. I can point out specific evangelicals who I think are frankly racist. Uh, I've said them before, I won't say them in this moment, but what I will say is I would never go around saying all evangelicals are racist. What I would do is say, I think this evangelical has a racist theology. They've made racist statements. Same thing with a compliment, with not complementarianism, but patriarchy specifically. There are certain Christians, evangelicals, I think, who the way that they talk about women and gender relations suggests to me, provides good evidence, in fact, that they are misogynists, that they have hostility toward women. But I would never say that evangelical Christians are all misogynists. There are evangelical Christians who I believe have heretical theology. They actually denying are denying key dogmatic claims that are part of historic Orthodox Christianity. But just because they're evangelicals, I would never go around saying evangelicals as a group have heretical theology or that they're another religion. Yet that is exactly what is happening time and again when we, these evangelical leaders are talking about progressive Christianity. And it needs to stop. It's harmful. Now, the last thing I wanted to point out as I conclude or wind up this video is that obviously this is always harmful, right? It's always wrong to target groups as outgroups and dehumanize and objectify them and spread misinformation about them. But there is a particular tragic irony in what evangelicals are doing to progressive Christians right now, all these evangelical leaders that continue to spread this misinformation. The first thing is the irony that they are professing to defend truth, right? The rhetoric of truth has been a, a big evangelical brand for decades, right? We are standing for truth. We stand for objective truth. This other group, they are relativists or skeptics, or they reject truth. They don't care about truth, but we love truth. But when you, when you profess that rhetoric uh, of loving truth, you really need to actually stand up for truth. And that means not spreading misinformation about other groups like you are doing with progressive Christians who can't all be lumped into one group of being opposed to Orthodox Christianity. You just can't do that. And the second thing I wanna point out in terms of the tragic irony of all of this is that many people, they become progressive Christians. They self-identify as progressive Christians because they came out of a fundamentalist or conservative evangelical background that to them was very constraining and inadequate in key, key aspects, intellectually, theologically, socially. And they're now beginning to critique it and recognize that conservative evangelicalism or fundamentalism are not the same thing as mere Christianity. And so many of the things that they've been raised to think were just part of what it means to be a mere Christian are not, in fact, what it means to be a mere Christian. I mean, I know this. I talked about this in my book, uh, What's So Confusing About Grace. I mean, growing up, you know, kind of having uh, from my ecclesial background, uh, a very binary view of reality. You know, we think about the church as like the, the saved people. The world is scary and dark. And, and so you can't expect to find truth in the world. It's just in the church. Having a real legalism about things like Halloween or the consumption of alcohol or listening to secular music, things like that, recognizing that, no, in fact, those things you don't have to, they're not part of Christianity. In fact, for the most part, I think they're harmful. That was liberating. Uh, and then realizing, well, you don't actually have to hold to eternal conscious torment as, as the one way that Christians are given to think about judgment in the afterlife, 
you don't have to believe young earth creationism, right? Uh, these are all aspects of people that find that they are progressing out of a conservative or fundamentalist evangelical background. Uh, and so they're on that journey. They're now trying to figure out what mere Christianity is. And for many of them, it's a little bit destabilizing, it's uncertain, but it can also be exhilarating and life-giving. And at the very moment where they're on that journey, and I think they're coming close in key respects to recognizing some of the inadequacies and the weaknesses and the dangers and the legalism of their theological upbringing in a conservative, fundamentalist, evangelical background. At that very moment, they now are hearing from many of these same people from the background that they left are now accusing them of having completely apostatized, of being heretics, of having rejected the gospel, of having started or joined another religion, of being maliciously opposed to the kingdom of God. And those people are getting their categories and their language from people like Alyssa Childers and Sean McDowell and uh, Mike Winger and all these other people that are promoting this misinformation about progressive Christianity. And what that does is it only pushes these progressive Christians further away from conservative evangelical Christianity. Maybe that's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing, but it's an unnecessary thing. You don't need to attack people and further alienate them and dehumanize them and objectify them just because they don't share your particular brand of Christianity or they're on a new journey trying to figure it all out. So uh, that's for me to conclude my monologue now. Um, as you'll see, I think I remained relatively calm. I was trying to be winsome and, and not trying to be angry. Um, although, again, I am sad. I'm disappointed. And I'm disappointed that um, the people who are promoting these ideas either do not withdraw them, retract them, and then make reparations for the damage that they've done to the body of Christ, or agree to have a conversation with me where we can hash this out as hopefully brothers and or sisters in Christ uh, and really figure out uh, what their claims are and how they can justify those claims mm -hmm. against progressive Christians.